Traditional stained glass applique has got to be one of the coolest quilting techniques in my opinion. I am dying to share with you how we're going to put down the quick bias and use a twin needle to set it all in place. Let's get started. I get so much inspiration from living in California, surfing, being outdoors, and I absolutely love the California poppies. They grow everywhere, and I was totally taken by this Empress Garden uh, Island Batik. It's a 10 by 10 pre-cut. So when I designed this poppy project, and actually you can purchase a pattern for this and make the whole thing, the background lays out with the 10 inch squares all stitched together. And then I have appliques that all fit on those 10 inch squares as well. And not only that, but we've got this really cool, it's called Quick Bias. It's a bias ribbon that's already been cut and fused. So we're gonna use a hot iron to put this down and we're gonna use a twin needle to stitch it. And that's what I really wanna focus on in the video today. So we've also created a free printable for you that you can use. So just bounce into the description below and you can print this out. You're gonna have a map right here to follow to put together a single poppy. And this poppy I've actually chosen on purpose because it's got some different techniques to learn in the leading process or that quick bias process. I'll just call it the lead like in stained glass from this point on, okay? So with this, there's your map you'll need in a few. You'll also want to go ahead and print out both pages. These are all the parts and pieces you're going to need. And like with all good applique, right, what I do is I trace this first onto fusible web. You trace it onto your paper side. The shiny is the glue side, so I want you to trace on the paper side, right? And label your numbers and your pieces and all of that. And then what I also do is I layer and layer as many of my pieces onto one piece of fabric as I possibly can so that when I cut it out with my cool little shark applique cutter, and I also made these pieces very easy for you to practice with your shark applique cutter with, right? So get it all cut out, and then I'm ready to start peeling the paper off and laying it out on my design board. And let's talk about that a little bit too as I tidy up here. This board is actually got batting, it's my ironing surface. So I'm not gonna have to move my project when I'm done. I'm gonna simply bring my iron over here. I'm gonna double check, make sure it's getting nice and hot because we want it hot and we want it dry because I'm using the heat and bond feather light. That's the fusible web that I love, okay? So what I've started to do is I've started to peel the paper backing off and lay these out kind of following the map, but in position on the background and the coffee is certainly charging through my veins. I can feel it right now. Maybe I jumped ahead a little fast. The background, as I was trying to point out on the big quilt, they're 10 inch squares, five by 10 inch rectangles, and five by five inch squares, all sewn together quarter inch seam allowances. A basic patchwork you're gonna make, whether you make the small or the big version, okay? And then we have our background. We can start laying out here, okay? And then, like I said, there's still paper on the back, and sometimes when you peel fusible web, if you get a corner and you don't see that glue, that shiny part down there in the fabric, you might need to go to another spot. This is a good piece. I'm just peeling it back so you can see the adhesive is back there. And I'm gonna set this into place. And then this piece I've already peeled the glue off of and it lays down in here. Like yay. Checking my map over there. And then another thing I love is a stiletto for moving things around because the glue can be a little bit tacky at times, especially on a hot day. So I can then go ahead and position things just as I want. And the stiletto allows me to slide things where I need. I'm gonna put this underneath a little bit. So all you have to do is get your design the way you want it. And that coffee makes my hands like coyote earthquake pills. There we go. Okay, so now I've got it the way I like. I'm gonna take my hot iron and we're gonna fuse this down just by setting and lifting, setting and lifting, because I don't wanna be sliding the iron around. If I slide the iron around right now, I'll move parts and pieces. And of course, if you're not using the heat and bond, you may have different ironing times. So just definitely make sure you're reading the instructions from the manufacturer, right, on your fuse. To make sure it works great. And then we have it set. Once all the applique pieces of your design are firmly pressed in place, you are certainly ready to do your leading. And I've got to tell you, I've been dying to do this for years and years. I've seen quilts like this and always loved them. And it was even more fun than I expected. So a couple tools let's talk about first. Um, the Clover Quick Bias is a fusible 
uh, bias ribbon. So it's gonna flex and move fantastically for us. And what you're looking at right now is the backside. So it already has a fusible webbing on it. Okay, and then the top side is black. It comes in a bunch of different colors, and this is a quarter inch wide, so it's gonna cover those seams of our applique pieces nicely, but it's still gonna allow us to bend and curve as we need around all those fun shapes, right? Um, the best way to put that stuff down, in my opinion, is using the Clover Mini Iron. This thing is radical because it gets nice and hot on the tip, but I have real nice control, and I can safely keep my other hand around it while I'm putting the lead down, and it's fun. I'm going to show you how to use this in a second. There's a little stand that comes with it, and make sure you use that, because if this comes in contact with your, with your board or something, it can certainly melt uh, or burn, burn your board. Little pair of flat uh, scissors and the stiletto still are gonna help me make some control as well as I curve things around if I don't want to uh, get too close to my fingers with the iron, sometimes these things will help, right? So if you're new to this like I was, I wanted to think of it in two different layers. I wanted to think about it in the layer of, is it gonna be easier, hard to do? Physically setting the track of the bias down and or is it gonna look polished and is it going to look finished when I'm done? So what I'm trying to really say here is I want to go around this big flower petal last because it's on top of everything and it's going to finish everything and it's going to hide any raw edges that I would need where I start another piece of letting out from under here. So with that thought process in mind, actually these long straight lines that led the patchwork in the background are a great place to start. So let's just start there today. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this ribbon and the paper backing is gonna peel off and stay out of the way. Every few yards I just cut that. First thing I do is I lay it in and I eyeball it or dry fit it, if you like my construction terms. And I see that I need to cut a little bit of an angle on it. Now it's already on the bias, so when you cut the angles, those areas actually can fray a bit. So I wanna make sure I lay it under another piece. And I'm holding it in position, and I'm now taking the mini iron, and I'm just gonna set it down, and slowly begin applying that heat and a bit of pressure. So on these long straight runs like this, I want you to not pull on the ribbon. If you pull on the ribbon too tight, if it doesn't bond perfectly, it might pop up or it could cause your quilt to pucker, right? Because it can have some tension on it. So you don't need to pull. You're just going to lay it down nice and flat, nice and easy. Okay. And then I'm going to let that cool. And while that's cooling, I'm going to take the scissors and I'm going to trim it right off. Okay. And I bet you can't see perfectly at home. So let's move this more to the center here. We'll move it back out of the way when I show you how to stitch it with that three millimeter twin needle. But there, can you see a little bit better? Oh, good. So now let's work in this spot right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the letting and you can set it in both directions. So let me show you this trick. I'm going to come from the edge because I have the straight cut already made and I'm going to come across that line. And then what I like to do is I like to stop about a quarter inch back from where I want to make my cut. And then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to kind of use that applique piece, the green piece, line visually there to make my snip. So it basically fits in there perfectly like that. Okay. Like I said, I wanted to go around this big petal at the end. So I'd also like to go around this part at the end. So I'm gonna come down here and show you a couple more tricks and then we'll go around in a circle just so you can see how that works and then I'm gonna show you on the machine because I've got one already all made so you can see how the stitching works because it's really, really cool. So right now, because I'm, I'm doing this circle next, I wanna come up to that edge. My angle's going the wrong direction. I've gotten in the habit of cutting my scraps away from the quilt in case I accidentally get a little heated around them. We don't want them to stick, okay. And I didn't find that ironing around the other bias was dangerous to the original setting. But what I did find that if I'm trying to bend it and curve it as I want to let it cool a little bit, cool a little bit, that way it's not hot and I'm not pulling it up while I'm working. We're going to come down here.
And I found that this kind of work was kind of a zen place for me. I really enjoyed the slow pace of putting it together and the real nice fine tuning and fitting of all of this. Let me show you how a circle will work because it seems like it might be tough, but it really isn't. I'm going to find a good place to stop. And I'm thinking this area right in here is going to be good. And I'm going to leave that edge flat. So here we go. I'm going to come in here now. And again, the trick is to let it cool. Give a little more application. Let it cool. And this part I'm going to really let cool a lot because I'm literally going to fold like a bias binding kind of fold this around this way. Try to keep it out of the way of the camera though for us. So right now, maybe you can see it's got this fold in it. Just like if we were doing mitered corners. And then I'm going to heat that and I'm going to let it set for a second. And now I can go in and I can finish that curve. Just like that. Okay, we're going to do one more as we come around this way. And I'm going to leave that in flat because remember, if I cut it straight, it's on the bias and therefore it doesn't have a tendency to unravel. And sometimes we have to fold it and sometimes we can curve it around depending. So this one, you are going to have to curve that around twice like that. And I did that to you on purpose so you would practice it. That way you wouldn't be afraid when you create your own designs and know you can do anything with this letting. Okay, I overlapped by maybe a quarter of an inch past my starting point. Okay. And then there's one last thing I need to teach you how to do, right? And you're saying, but Rob, you forgot to either get the letting under this spot here or under this spot because you were talking about getting it on the top. So let's go ahead and work on this spot over here. And because it's gotten bulky under that corner, right, I am going to trim it to try to fit in there. Sometimes I'll use my stiletto to really get it up underneath. Just like that there. And I can hold it and begin to get it like that. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to run this down now and I can come right in on top of the other piece of lead or the other piece of that quick bias. Now all of this is fusible so the more we iron on it the more chances of the glue breaking down and releasing so I don't want you to overdo it I want you to get it just like that and when all of your leading all of your quick bias is in place it's time to go over to the sewing machine. So I'm going to make sure that my iron is off I'm going to set this down, slide this out of the way, and show you the other half of the magic. So I'm using a Schmetz twin needle. This is a 3.0 needle. That means there are two needles on it. They're three millimeters apart, and that's important because it fits real nice as you go down that quick bias, the leading. It's going to hold down both sides, give us a parallel stitching, and it works terrific. I happen to be using the embroidery style needle that is a twin needle. They actually come in different tip styles and uh, boy the embroidery really punctures and penetrates nice and fast and I love it. So it's a great needle for the job. You can start just about anywhere but still thinking like we did with the leading. best to sew down the bottom layers before we sew down the top layers and so when doing something like that I'm just going to go ahead and you can see we have the twin needle and you know what maybe you don't know much about twin needles. I mention why they're there, but let's talk a little bit more quickly so that you understand exactly our format. Sorry, I, like I said, I'm so excited about the letting, I want to show you everything so quickly. We are only working right now on the quilt top. We do not have any batting, we do not have any backing in place or anything because when you use two needles on a standard sewing machine, the bobbin is going to zigzag underneath. So I don't want this look on the back of the quilt. This is the pre-letting stitching I did on one of the samples and a couple of the other spots you'll see. 
So that's what it will look like on the back of your project when the stitching is done. So we're just handling the quilt top, right? And then I'm not sure if you can tell on the sewing machine, but I actually have two spools of thread because you need a spool of thread for each eye of the needle. And most sewing machines will have a split in their tension system so that when you come around, you're gonna go thread on one side of that split and on the other side of that split so that you're independently putting tension on those threads. It's not as confusing as it sounds. And a lot of your owner's manuals will specifically show you how to thread for a twin needle setup. You do want to make sure your machine can do a zigzag. You won't be doing zigzag, but you know, this wouldn't work on a single whole plate, right? You want to make sure you've got a wide opening because you've got two needles or you'll have one needle in the single stroke. So really, really cool stuff. Now, let's get back to getting started here. So I'm constantly trying to maintain a lack of twist in my threads. I don't want them to get all bound up there. And I'm gonna go ahead and start, take a few stitches and back up just like I was doing any regular top stitching. And now I'm just slowly and visually following the letting and I'm trying to position this line on my presser foot down the center of the lead while I'm driving and I'm looking. Let the machine do the work for you. And here you're gonna see in a second, I'm gonna come over an area where there are two layers coming together. You probably can see that seam right about now. And you'll see those twin needles just go right over the top of it. But that's another reason why I don't like having the batting and the backing in place because I don't want all that thickness either. When we approach the end, I'm going to backstitch because I'll be going the other direction as I go over that letting. And then I'm gonna hand move this machine to the utmost position. And then when I go to trim my threads, I wanna not only trim my top threads, but I do wanna reach under and trim my bobbin thread too so that bobbin thread doesn't get hung up on anything at all, okay? So now let's do this really scary part, that little circle we just let it. I'll show you, you can do that sewing too, but I am just for good measure gonna start on a little bit of a straight run. I'm gonna trim the threads out of the way. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I had some other threads from that first line of stitching I've done. And here we go, a couple stitches forward, a couple stitches back to hold our threads in place. So as I approach a curve, I am now starting to add pressure in my hands. I'm literally, I don't wanna bend my needles, but I'm gonna to try to kind of manipulate the fabric slightly. And as I get to that really tight little corner, there may be a place where I literally need to hand crank one time and then take a pivot. And I'm trying my best not to over rotate or get away from that stitch. I'm gonna take another little stitch. I might even back up to catch it. And then here we go. So some of those really tight corners, if you can't massage the fabric around it, you can pivot. But as you practice, you'll find just by going slow, you can get most of it. And you can always go from one piece of letting to another, you probably saw that I could have jumped into the other spot there, but I find that this works best for myself. And if you're nervous about that, you can do this one stroke, make sure you've got it where you want it again. And then come around, keep those thread tails out of your way. And then again, I'm just gonna back stitch to secure. And we've got that. So, all you have to do for the rest of the project is just get all of that anchored down, all of the letting or that quick bias stitched down with your twin needle, and now your quilt top is complete. From that point on, treat it just like a regular quilt, but follow me to the back wall where you see the big finished project. There's a couple additional things I did with my machine quilting. First of all, this is an applique piece, and I can guarantee you there was a couple of spots that tried to peek out from underneath my letting. So what I did is I took a matching color thread and I closely stitched free motion style right along the inside of all of the applique pieces. But then to make it look intentional, I also went with about a quarter inch echo style quilting, still free motion style, 
and matching threads. I just went around and stitched all of the squares or the back panes that would have been in my stained glass window that were created from the patchwork I originally did. So that also came and held all the layers together now through that whole quilting process. So it's a complete finished quilt and it is awesome in my opinion. So I hope you really like the technique of how to do the leading to make it look like an awesome stained glass. Make sure you try it and practice on our free printable for you. If you love it, make sure you get yourself a copy of the pattern and we'll see you next time right here at Man Sewing. Thanks for being a Man Sewing fan. It's great to have you out there encouraging me to create fantastic new content. If you've missed any of the videos, we've got links for you here and here. And while you're checking those out, make sure you're subscribed. We don't want you to miss any of the action. Thank you.